Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome to yet another Heritage Railway. Today we are at the Midland Railway Butterley station and we're here for a special event because today it is Trains to the Seaside. Now our tickets have only cost us £13.50 each today and we thought wow that's pretty good for a trip to the beach so we came down very briskly. We're waiting for a train at the moment, so we thought while we do, we would take a look around the historic Butterley Station, which was built in the 1870s and then closed in the 1960s before being turned into a heritage railway. It's a beautiful old station, so let's have a look around. started it'd be rude not to go and look at the model railway and it's just amazing we found some cows so somebody's happy An incredible model railway I wish I had one like this they've also got some models for sale over here at the Alfreton model railway club i got to say, the prices are pretty good as well. £4 for an open wagon, 25 for all the little tank engines. Great deal. It's been a long time since I've been here, and I've forgotten really how much there was here. Lots and lots of different railway vehicles parked up. I'm always one for the unusual rail vehicles, and I can honestly say I've never seen one quite like this before. Look at the state of this. I feel like it's small enough that we could steal it. I thought you said that we could sit on it. I was like, okay. No, I think we could take it. Okay. Let's do it. Well, if you like pacers, and I know not very many people do, but there's certainly a lot of them here at the Butterley station. So, pacer fans in your thousands, this is where you should flock. <laughs> See the driver, Chloe. Oh, there's a beautiful lake coming up, which is very nice to pass over. It's a huge lake on both sides. Now, it's a short railway, isn't it? But you see some beautiful things along the way. It's not all just houses and things, it's very, very picturesque. We've been on the train for about two minutes. We're not at the beach yet. No, we are. We're at the beach. Come on, then. So, I mean, Chloe, we've, we're have we only on the train about five minutes. We can't be at a proper beach. But it, it feels like a beach. Ooh. Shall we build a sandcastle? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna build a sandcastle. This is what people subscribe for. All right, I think it's time. My latest model. There's a skeleton here. Oh, I found the dinosaur. Sorry, stick to the program. All right, here we go. Well, look at those over there, they're perfect. And then this, just dest destroy it. I'm not, get rid of it. Man. <laughs> it feels a bit like a beach. I'm not tall enough for the man. What do you mean the man? I'm the man. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> so what? 
there. I knew something felt wrong about that. I feel a prat, Chloe. Should we, should we go and look at the trains? <laughs> <laughs> well, there it goes. And we'll jump back on there later on. So here we are at Swanwick Junction, which it looks like a nice old fashioned station building, but I think it is a more modern build. Still, you could easily imagine this being an old fashioned Midland railway station. Turn around though, and we've got HSTs. What a juxtaposition that is. One thing they have got up here is an open signal box and it's really cool. You get a great view from the top. You can survey all the different engines and sidings and such. They got the lever rack and a lot of the original equipment in here as well. All free to look at, although you can't pull the levers. That's a shame, isn't it, Chloe? A big shame, I really wanted to. Yeah, shall we do it anyway? <laughs> Crash some trains. <laughs> Like train simulator all over again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what have they got a sink here for? Have you seen it? Yeah. I wonder if it's for when all the trains have crashed and they just want to wash their hands of the whole thing. See, that's one of those sinks that you use if you want to make your hands dirty rather than clean. <laughs> Chloe's terrified of heights and she's genuinely disturbed by this signal box. <laughs> I looked down, that scared me. You looked down, she saw the four foot drop and thought, oh my god. <laughs> We've just been offered a tour of the Golden Valley Light Railway Shed, which is the narrow gauge railway here. So let's go and have a look. So this display shows how the railway track evolved over the years. It's quite interesting. One of their narrow gauge locomotives, Joan, is here for an overhaul. And you can see all of her boiler tubes have been pulled out, I guess, to be checked or replaced. I think over there, that's her cab and a few other bits and pieces of the body all in little pieces they really have a huge variety of different vehicles in here from all over the country and apparently even a few bits from other countries as well and look even a few familiar disembodied faces as well and now we know what richard Dealey did after he retired so it's lunchtime nothing really to say cheese and onion roll Good stuff. Now it's your turn. She said no to her turn. <laughs> okay. This is one of my favourite things about Heritage Railways. Yeah, the locos and trains that run, but also the ones that don't. Quite nice to see the old relics. Well, since I always seem to do this, let's find out whether, what is it, Peckett, do you reckon? Has got sprung buffers. All right, no sprung buffers, but I'm here for a more serious purpose as well because I've been making a lot of models recently and one big question is how big are the actual rivets on a steam loco? So I want to find out. There's probably a fair bit of variation, so uh, I'm just going to have a look at quite a few of them. I feel like Hornby bringing, bringing rulers to railways and stuff. I mean, theirs are a bit bigger than mine, but my little ruler will do so now I can figure out the rivet size on my various models and let's have a look at these bolt heads as well. About two centimetres. <laughs> well, that should help with my model making, yeah. They're big rivets. One of the bigger rivets I've ever seen that, quite impressed. Look how bulbous it is. Most impressive. To say this is one of the more embarrassing, silly things I've done at a railway at is saying something. Right. Well, I've got lots of information about rivets and bolts. That's not to say that's all there is here at the Midland Railway, but uh, it's one of my biggest takeaways. I would kiss it, but it's dirty. case. There's the little narrow gauge railway. We were almost a bit disappointed weren't we that there was going to be no steam today but obviously that's not true. We'll have to have a go on that. Oh 
So here it is. This is the narrow gauge station. Quite unusual, I suppose, to see narrow gauge track right next to standard gauge. But yeah, this is it. But it is here. Another lovely little station as well. The train's coming, Chloe. So we managed to get onto the narrow gauge railway right next to the loco as well. That should be an experience. So let's take a ride and let's see where we go. Hey Chloe. Yeah. You do realise we're sat right next to the loco, don't you? Yeah. So all the water and the ash and the dirt and the smell and the steam and the smoke, it's all gonna come right into us. See ya. very unique train ride. Right here is the logo and we're open in the air, no protection. Very, very unusual. One, two. So we almost didn't come into the static engine house because we thought there's not going to be trains in here. But look at this. Now, it looks like a fairly unimpressive Stevenson's rocket model, you might say. But this model comes from the 1800s. Little note on top says this was built in around 1890, which is crazy to me. All the models I look at, you know, it's rare to find one from the 1920s or 30s. This one predates all of that, and look at it, it's quite impressive. So yeah, a Stevenson's rocket made in around 1890, and it stood on the platform of Bradford Station, apparently, and it's coin-operated. It's now helping to fund the present museum and the extension which is to be built in the near future, so it sounds like we can get it to run. All right, let's run a model from 1890. If this swallows me 10p and doesn't work, I'm not going to be happy. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Well, I think that's pretty cool for well over 100 years old, don't you? Chloe, there's an OH hunter in the jungle. Like, seriously, look. Look where we are. The West Shed's this way. There's the West Shed here, which has got a princess class, or is it a duchess? 
Well, we need to go and find out. And there's a miniature railway here as well, which makes you look very silly. So naturally, I'll be interested in that. Let's go and check them out. The West Shed. It's the West Shed, Chloe. Well, this is it. The West Shed. And I think we're going to see some of the finest locomotives of the day in here. So let's go. The West Shed. What a magnificent loco. Princess Class, Princess Royal, Princess Margaret Rose. And there's another princess. <laughs> so here it is, the fully detailed cab of the Princess Royal Class by William Stanier Hobbies. And as you can see, it's marvelously detailed. I think the pipework is actually separately fitted inside here. They've even painted the gauges and such. It's a very, very impressive and faithful recreation. Five stars. Very, very good. It's William Stanier. That's the guy that designed this. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. What's William Stanier doing looking out the window, oddly? Isn't he supposed to be designing things? So this saloon coach, we've just heard, has an incredible history to it. It was built for the chairman of the LNWR originally, and it was used by him personally. But since then, it's been used by people such as Winston Churchill, our current King Charles, been on it, that's incredible. And it's been faithfully restored. And a lot of the interior fittings are original, apparently. A lot of this stuff has been preserved. It's been changed a lot over the years, the guide was telling us, but for the most part, everything you see inside here is all authentic. Fascinating. Well, here I am inside the cab of a 9F, and I might not have mentioned this before, but this is actually not the first time I've been inside the cab of a 9F, because there was an occasion uh, where for my birthday I actually drove a 9F on the Great Central Railway. So. You might say, what's he doing in the 9F cab? Well, actually, I'm perfectly at home here. Come inside. Speaking of 9Fs, there's a miniature railway here as well. And I think the loco they've got running is also a 9F. So. I think we have to have a go, Chloe. Here it comes. The 9F. That's awesome. I think there's a 1400 tank engine as well. That's a wonderful machine, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. So that was our fantastic day at the Midland Railway Centre. What a fantastic railway this has been. The actual railway itself is only quite small, but there's so much more besides that to see. We've been on the miniature railway, the narrow gauge railway, we've been on a tour around the shed, so many other engines and vehicles parked up to look at. We've been here all day and I feel like there's still more that we could have looked at. Even better than all of that though, is the staff that work here. All the volunteers, they're just so lovely. They just offered to show us around everything. We've been around the narrow gauge engine shed. We had a look inside the cow of the Princess Royal. We've been in the saloon. Just a wonderful place to be in such a great atmosphere. So many people so passionate about what they do and also so passionate to show it off and let people enjoy it and explore it. So thank you to everybody here at the Midland Railway at Butterley. I suppose the only thing that's a little bit sad is that there were so few people here. So get yourself down, there's a lot to see, not just stuff running, but other things too. And thank you so much to Chloe, my lovely camera woman and companion, for making this possible as well. So thank you for watching, folks. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.
There it goes, class 108. What did you think to that, Chloe? It was super. It's just a thrill, isn't it? What can it's you say? You got you lost for words, I notice. That's what trains do.